Hello, everybody, and welcome in for another episode of Vol Club Confidential. I'm your host, Austin Price of VolQuest.com. Coming up on the show tonight, we have Tennessee center Cooper Mays on this Halloween week. Tennessee playing UConn on homecoming coming up on Saturday. But before then, we bring in Volunteer Club's James Clawson. And James, really a successful turnout for the Keeneland event last Friday up there in Lexington and for the Vol Club tailgate up there on the Bluegrass. And for the Vols. So, yeah, yeah, I had a great time at Keeneland on Friday um, watching the horses run. And then great tailgate um, at Kentucky. And then, obviously, a great night getting the win was big. Your thoughts on the smoke in between the third and fourth quarters? Well, you could hardly see across the stadium. But, you know. Being in the press box, it was like being in the plane and you're you're going through clouds on your way landing or you know, going up. Well, you know, the flower, you couldn't see the flower. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't see the extra point on that one on that one score. There was so much smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this weekend, homecoming, UConn, um, early nine, game. 9 a.m. start for the tailgate, um, McClung Tower, Humanities Plaza. So, should be good. We got Gus's, Gus's fried chicken out. Um, so, it should be a great great time before a noon game. Gus homecoming. has been a big, big time partner. Yeah, Gus is a great partner. Um, we got locations on Sutherland and then on Level Road. Yeah, brand new location on Level Road across yeah. from Costco. Yeah. Your, uh, what's your go-to at Gus's? Uh, the Tenders. Mac and cheese always good. Mac and okra. cheese. Okra is a okra. Okra, yeah. Don't forget the the. I think it's the fried catfish. That was always a when we did the show out there a few years ago. That was always a kind of a hidden hidden thing on the menu. That, you like catfish? Well, no, I don't. You know I don't. But okay, I was just saying, don't right. forget that for yeah. those people that don't know. Everybody just associates it with chicken. There you go. But there are other options. There are. There are yeah. other options. Well, we'll see you out there at the tailgate on Saturday, and uh, we'll see you next week as we host. Tennessee Titans or a uh, special teams coordinator Mike Eckler on the show. As for this week, let's turn our attention to Cooper Mays. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Coop, when you went in and, and you found out in the first part of August that you weren't going to be able to go and you're going to have to have triple hernia surgery, have an abdominal wall repair. Kind of ask what, what's going through your mind at that point? Well, really, immediately I was I was pretty bummed out, you know. I'm, I'm normally not like that, but, you know, for the first little bit there, I was I was extremely bummed out and didn't, didn't really know how to process it. But then, you know, about a day went by and kind of just, you know, sat down and made the decision to get it repaired and everything and, after that, I couldn't really, you know, I wasn't going to sit there and just ponder over it the whole time. So, you know, got up and then, you know, just made the best I could with it. How rough was that to come back from? Because it, it sure sounds painful. Yeah, it's painful. The, I mean, the main thing is it's hard to play, you know, center in the SEC without, you know, being strong in your core. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the pain was one thing. Like, sometimes you can deal with the pain. Yeah, but, I mean – it's it's hard to do that when you got so much instability in your core. Let's take it all the way back to when you first got to campus. Uh, that first year, you you played a little you know, jumbo tight end, and, and then since then you've been the starting center. But yeah. kind of what's this journey? What's this ride been like? Man, it's it's really gone by a lot faster than I thought it would. But it's it's been a really good experience. You know, I, I came into college, and you know, if you would have told me that all the stuff that happened and and you know how it went down, I would have told you you were crazy and that there was no way. But um, it's ended up being a really, really great experience. I, I, I've been really blessed, and God's been really good. And, you know, I've gotten to watch my little brother grow up, and I got to play with my older brother, got my first start right beside him. And, you know, it's been a really beautiful journey. So you look at those first couple of years, you had Cade here. Then, you know, you had Darnell. You're kind of like that old vet that's, you know, been around – I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not saying you're not close with people, but at the same time, like the guys you were close to have graduated. How different does this year feel uh, just from an, being an older guy standpoint? It was a really different experience. The whole the whole year I've been kind of trying to find my role and, and you know, and I think I struggle with that at first because, you know, I've always been the little brother, kind of always my whole life. Like I've, I've always had Cade to look up to as my older brother and then, when I got into the O-line room here at Tennessee, everybody kind of already knew me in the O-line room. And, and you know, they kind of took me in as, like, their little brother. You know, Trey, just Jerome, BK. I mean, there's just a number of guys that took me in I was really, really close to. So I was always playing that role as, like, the little brother. And then now, you know, I'm 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 the old guy. And, you know, I struggled at first with it. It was, it was kind of hard to fill that role. But now I've kind of grown to like it a lot. I've, I think I've 
played my role really well. Did you talk to anybody that you know has been that big brother, older guy to kind of pick their brain on maybe how to morph into that? Me, me and Ellerby talked about it a little bit. You know, I, I kind of we had this night where we had like a recruiting night or something in in the off season, and we were on top of the stadium and. I was kind of just sitting there talking to him about it, how just, you know, kind of just putting everything into perspective and how far we've come and just everything. And we kind of got on that topic. And he just kind of said that, like, everybody kind of goes through that, that gets into that leadership role later in their career is, you know, the dynamic changes a little bit and it's just natural and you kind of grow with it and you kind of just feel it out and it, it works out for the best. And it has. It's, it's been a really good experience. Where's your game changed? Where's your game gotten better? Man, I'm, I've stayed really big this year. You know, I think that's been my – the the difference this year is I've stayed above, like, 300, 305 pounds, like, the whole year, which normally I haven't been able to do. So I've been really happy about that. And, you know, I think it's showed up a little bit in my strength and everything, which I'm still trying to get kind of back on my feet and get where I want to be and where I need to be and everything. But, you know, it's been a good start of the season. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. Do you think part of that is, you know, you didn't, you didn't go through August – and most of September where you get those 95, 95, 95, and you're just practicing every day and you're just dropping weight like crazy. Yeah, that 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 definitely has something to do with it, I think. I think I've been able to – It's I don't know, it's kind of like a double-edged sword because I didn't get to prepare the way I needed to for the season, you yeah. know, and that hurt me in a sense. But in another sense, I feel way more fresh on the back end of the season this year than I did last year, and I've been able to hold my weight and everything. And, you know, it, it's like, like I said, it's had good – good parts and bad parts but you know that that part's been good about it you all have had pretty good continuity this year right tackles moved around a little bit you know andre started the year and then he kind of went down and ollie when you came back just shifted to the left guard which is where he's kind of played um how big has the health been to kind of have this offensive line be as good as it's been especially in the run you know the running game where you guys continue to lead the league i, th I think we've done a really good job with it i think just you know every year you know somebody's going to go down or a couple people are going to go down you just don't know when it's going to happen you know football's you know never going to be injury free for the most part so I think we've done a good job of putting guys in and, and them guys filling their roles and and you know especially Ollie I think Ollie's done a nice job with the the cards he's been dealt with with me going down and and everything and I think he's done a good job adjusting I think our tackles have been a really good spot whereas you know, we didn't know where that was going to be in, in earlier in the year, and I, I think it's been I think it's been a good year. I think we've done really well. I think we've kind of like turned the tide a little bit on. You know, we were big on the pass heavy last year, and everybody sure. thought that we couldn't run. And then nowadays, everybody kind of likes our running game. You look back to high school. Um, you know, you struggled to put on weight, and you know your dad kept telling me, "Coop's going to get there. I'm mm -hmm. not worried about it. I was a late. I, I grew late." I grew late, and then you did. I mean, Kevin Kevin proved to be totally right in that deal, and yeah. we don't want to give him too much credit, but at the same time, you know, because uh, we know your mom's were, were the, the smarts, the brains, and all that really <laughs> lies. But at the same time, like, he did call that one. Um, like, when you look back at that kid, what are you most proud of, of 14-year-old Cooper Mays? Oh, man, just the, the resilience, you know, I think – I think the way I grew up and, and kind of the guy that I've turned into and kind of always something that's rang true for me is that I'm a guy that, you know, just gets it done. You know, maybe I don't – it doesn't look perfect. You know, you know I'm not big, strong like some guys out there. So, you know, I'm undersized a little bit. But but I, I, just get, I, I just get the job done, you know. And I think that's kind of been the story of my life is that, you know, I just do the most with, with kind of the least in some cases. And, and I just – I don't know. I, I I found a way to overcome everything that's been thrown at me. What's the best What's the best story you have playing football? Like you know, as far as it can be, pee wee. It can someone just strikes a chord with you? It can be high school. It could be at UT. Like what? What? Like what's that one core memory that you have that just like man, I, I love th that moment. Oh man, uh, it's it's hard to say. Everybody, a lot of a lot of people would say Alabama. Last sure, year. I get I mean, it. That's a that's a that's a given. I mean, that's a big moment. Can't really get better than that. But playing with my brother was, you know, no question the the best thing that I've really gotten to do in football. And I've done it kind of on every level so far. So, man, that's been that's been really beautiful. I think our high school experience. I wish I would have 
been able to enjoy it more in the moment, you know, um, just being young, it's, it's hard to do that. It's hard to think I, big picture when you're 15, 16. Man, yeah, it's, it's hard, but I, I've grown a lot and I've, I've been able to now. And, and I think I did a good job of it back in the day, but nothing can really make you enjoy it until it's gone, you know, kind of thing. But man, what a, what a real blessing and, and how just good God is that he kind of allowed that to happen. You know, you look back at your high school career. I mean, obviously, you know, not really good career as an offensive lineman, a Catholic, but you were really. I, no, I was, I was getting ready to go there. You're really talking about this. You're really because. underrated defensive lineman. I mean, you literally <laughs> almost single handedly beat Central that year um, in the playoffs, and y'all you, you come up short. But at the same time, I mean, you you were wrecking people out there um, on the D line. We always talk about UT football, but this is this is the good stuff right here. I truly, I see. I tell people I could play anything, but not a lot of people probably believe me. But Pruitt and staff, they all reassured me multiple, multiple times that I could play whatever I wanted. You know, offensive line, defensive line, sure. tight end, whatever. They just want to be, be a football player, which I personally, I think I had more fun on defense. I was I was better at defense because I was smaller. You know, I think when I've gotten bigger, I think I've honed in a little bit on offensive line. But back in the day, I was, I was wrecking folks. My junior year, that see, okay, I, okay, I'm glad we talked about this. I should have been Mr. Football my junior year. That's a, that that was that was a robbery that I wasn't even nominated to be up there. I mean, first of all, it's BS that they do the thing where only only quarterbacks are going to get picked nowadays. Or like yeah, there's no lineman anymore. There's I mean, no linemen can win it, but they're in the they're lumped in with yeah, the they quarterbacks. Have to be like somebody like Cade, who's just five star and all that, and yeah. everybody's going to pick them regardless. But like I was, I was kind of under the radar a little bit. I was all state on O line, and I was the region D lineman of the year. I had like ninety something tackles, over like twelve sacks. I mean, there's, I mean, I, I think, I think that's one of the better seasons in, in East Tennessee, like high school football. Just it just went unrecognized. I don't know. You think it's better than anything your brother's done? I think I think I was a better high school player than Cade, and I think Cade would tell you the same thing. All around, as making a difference on, uh, on a all around game basis, like I, I was, I was doing, I think more. You think it? You think it's because you were you were athletic enough, big enough to play, athletic enough to not be too girthy. I mean, because K was just so girthy. I mean, he was. Yeah, K was just huge. I mean, like the thing is, K was so big for a high school guy. And when you find kids that big, they don't know how to play football. They don't know how to use their hips and roll their hips and leverage and everything. You heard that, Cade? You don't know how to play football. No, no, no. Most kids, Cade's size, but <laughs> Cade, on the other hand, Cade. I, the Maze boys, they just have a natural way of they, – they they know how to play football. They just – so he he understood, and he was big and strong and everything. So that that played out for him. But me, I was like 240. My, my So the last game of my junior year, with all my pads on and everything, I was like 243. So really I was like probably 237. So like I was playing at like below 240 at the end of my junior year. And I, that allowed me to play – play defense a lot better because I was just killing folks because everybody everybody I was I was pretty much bigger than all the alignments still even though I was small so they would try to like they would think I was going to try to like run them over which that was never like my that was never my thing I, I would like to get people to try to like try to kill me and then I would just make a miss and then I'd be that was how I played defense I just jump gaps and you know Swim moves, all that stuff. What are your memories of Tennessee football as a kid? Is it is it of your Uncle Michael Frog? I mean, is that kind of the first core memories of Tennessee football? Yeah, yeah, that would probably be the first part. Um, I remember uh, probably not good, but uh, Mount Cody. <laughs> sure, yeah, and Mount Cody. That was that was the one that stood out in my mind. And then I would I remember always watching Tennessee versus Florida at my grandma's house, and we'd be eating ramen noodles, and I'd just be watching the game, just so disappointed because I feel like we could just never. You know, we could hump. never get the we could never get the big victories. You know what I'm saying? So that was upsetting. But that that's kind of that was where I was at as a young guy. And then you come back and you, you're here last year and you beat Florida, you Boom. beat Alabama. Boom. You know, I mean, yeah, let's you. You know, come up short this year, but at the same time, you got to start winning those every now and again to start winning them routinely, right? Right. Well, I mean, I I think it's a step forward in your program's direction. You know, I think, you know just getting big time victories. I think that back in the day, I think Tennessee struggled with when it was big time games and stuff like that. And it would get to like games like overtime and stuff. It would just, we would never be able to pull out the, the, the long hard fought games with close, like higher ranking opponents and stuff. And I think last year we kind of, 
kind of turned the corner a little bit on some of that stuff. And I think we we got some big time victories and crucial moments. And and I think it it was pivotal for our season. You know, like the pit game. If I mean us beating them in overtime, that that changed the whole trajectory of our season. Yeah, because sure. that game you're like you when you left there, you know, I think people were like, oh man, I mean Pitt was on their third string quarterback. I mean they had to take it to overtime, and who saw three weeks later, you you beat Florida and LSU basically in back to back games, and then a month later you beat Alabama, right? I mean who saw that team? Did you see that team? Man, I did. I but I'm I'm like I don't know. I'm pretty delusional when it comes to like Tennessee, like just really any team that I play on, like I. <laughs> I think we're always going to go out here and whoop everybody's butt. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. That might be one thing. But I, I truly, I think the whole team expected to win, and that was a pivotal thing for, for us to win. You know, I think the the power of the mind is super, super, super strong. So, I mean, if everybody goes out there and has one one common goal and everybody expects to win, it's it's going to change the outcome. Especially in today's age with, with NIL and everything, it's, it's, it's a whole different ballgame. What's Tennessee football mean to you? Man, I mean – it's hard. I, I mean, everybody's gonna. You think you'd be like, oh, just Tennessee just means everything. I, I just, I just love it through and through and everything. I just, I just love, I love my brothers. You know, Tennessee is 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 my home, and and I love Tennessee and the university. But man, I just, I love going out there with my brothers that are there, and and then that's what it's about for me. Like I, I sweat and bleed for those guys, and and you know that's gonna last a long, long time. The, the bonds that I've created and. Just everything that that we've been through together. We referenced earlier, you're really close with some of those older guys. Obviously, your brothers in the NFL, Trey's in the NFL, Carvin, uh, Darnell. How much do you on Sundays? Do you ever have time to go? What's going on with Trey? What's going on with Darnell? Like, did you watch Sunday Night Football last night when Darnell was playing? Yeah, I, I, I sometimes I'm I'm not gonna like revolve my whole day. Around sure, no, I get it. The, the NFL football, but anytime I'm at home, I usually go home on Sundays and see my family but anytime I get a chance where I see a game on where it's the Chiefs or the Bears obviously I watch my brother when he plays and everything but anytime I see familiar faces that are going to be playing I always tune in all right let's flip it to your younger brother camp and by the time this kid gets to high school I mean he's going to be a folklore legend right I mean you've you made him an Instagram account when he was like three and uh I need to be more active on it he, he is massive um what is he? I like to describe him as Cade, Cade reincarnate as far as looks, but you're kind of like cerebral mind. I would say that's probably accurate. It's pretty on point. He's he's obviously he's, he's bigger than me and Cade, but he's he's more on the same kind of body type as Cade. But yeah, like you said, the the mentality and kind of his. I don't know. He's a little bit quirky, kind of like I was. I, I'm not as much anymore, but when I was younger, I was I was a weird little guy. So <laughs> I think he's kind of the same wavelength for sure. What did young Cooper Mays like to do? Oh, man, just chill. You know what I'm saying? If I was anywhere with my mom, like, you know, I was – if I was – if I just had a basket of chicken tenders and fries and, and I had my mama, I was I was going to be good for the whole day. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't have to worry about me. Best chicken tenders are where? Oh, Aubrey's. Aubrey's. Unreal. Y'all don't know about that, do you? Yeah, they do. Aubrey's, it's top notch. You know, with honey mustard, barbecue, what you roll with? Uh, honey mustard, and then you get the ranch and buffalo sauce on the side too. So you got different options. I don't know. I'm a, see. I'm I'm actually pretty passionate about this. Different chicken tenders need different sauces. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like you could have some chicken tenders where you're like, yeah, this is better with honey mustard. There's some chicken tenders that you eat, and you're like, these are better with the ranch and hot sauce combo. There's there's two different styles. I don't know how to explain it. Does it, it, but it on, be, does it depend on how heavy the breading is? That's that's probably what it is. I didn't really know how to formulate the opinion, but it, it probably is the the breading and the the taste of the breading. All right, it's Halloween this week. Yeah, goat Halloween candies. What? Man, uh, it's between Kit Kats and Snickers. I'm gonna I'm gonna probably have to say Kit Kat, but I don't know. Snickers is I had a Snickers earlier before, like from the meeting. It's pretty serious, man. It's hard to get better than that for real. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty exhilarating. You know what I'm saying? I don't think you can go wrong. Twix, Reese. Nah, see, I had two Twix as well. Man, yeah. Well, no wonder you're staying above 300 pounds. I had a Snickers. I had two Twix. I mean, <sighs> I'm gonna go get some dinner after this too. It's gonna be good. <laughs> Dude, he's going to Aubrey's to get chicken tenders. No, I wish, man. It's, it's a little bit late for that. It's a classy establishment, man. 
they wear like jeans and like a blue shirt and everybody wears the same thing it's pretty it's pretty top notch you know what I'm saying <laughs> sorry I'm being a clown <laughs> okay let's get back on topic <laughs> I don't know there is getting back on topic um when you and Kate are playing video games how competitive is that shoot not not as much anymore we've gotten off the game a little bit oh really yeah we were on it today but i mean it's just not the same man it doesn't hit the same why i don't know man that's the that's the that's the question that's the age-old question i don't really know it it's kind of like everything man is it because you're get getting older, older? Just, yeah when you get older man just something it's not as colorful you know what i'm saying it's like life's a little bit bleaker <laughs> maybe it's just the day outside it's a little bit muggy today well you know, the sun's not came out today um I'll say this. You a I, fan of rainy days? No, I'm not. I, I'm a fan of like drizzle, like if I'm on the coast. Like, you know, like you go to, like, to Alaska, so you go to Maine. Specific. You know. Are you a lobster guy? Like crab cakes or something? No, I just I, like I just feel like when guy. you're like uh, anybody that knows me will laugh when they hear him say that. Um, uh, but when you're, I don't know, when you're like on those coastal towns, I just think like when you're in Maine or in Alaska, like I just, I want a little drizzle, I want some cloud cover and some drizzle. Yeah, you did that. You did that cruise, didn't you? To Alaska this summer, yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, well, hey, I can rock with it. I'm I'm big on the Pacific Northwest, you know what I'm saying? Like that depressing weather. Mm, I love that. It's comfort, man. I tell you what. Do, do do you ever are you a deep thinker? Like do you ever like like sit around and contemplate just like the, I mean, you're talking about getting older and I mean, you're only what 22? I mean, like, you know, maybe 23. I mean, like, you're not that yeah, old. but I mean, like, yeah, I'm not old in the grand scheme of things. But, like, you're saying, like, when you, when it ta- comes to, like, playing video games, I'm on the I'm on the upper end of the spectrum probably. I don't know. There's some older guys out there. but Hey, man, you got to stay sharp. I, 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 when I was your age, I was sharp, and then I quit playing. And sharp. then my kids, you know, decided they want to start playing video games now that I'm 40, and I pick one up one, and it's like, yeah, what is this? Is yeah. I don't know, man. See, I'm, I'm pretty – I'm pretty – I used to be pretty nasty. I See, I don't – I don't. I just don't see myself getting to a point where I'm like, ah, I can't. I can't keep up. You know what I'm saying? But that's maybe just the competitor in me. You know what I'm saying? What's most thing? What's one thing most people don't know about you? Oh man, that's a good question. See, I, I, you should have sent me this question. I would have been prepared. Um, people don't know about me. I don't know, man. I'm pretty cultured. I feel like I don't know if anybody can really pick up on that. I feel like I can. You can put me in any crowd, and I'll probably have a good time. I think Kev's a lot like that. You probably picked up on that. Kev's can talk not, about like, yeah, you know you know a little bit about every, a lot of things, so you can talk about things. Yeah, like a Renaissance man. I don't know. I mean, I well that too. Yeah, but I don't know. I can just I can just get in where I fit in. You know, history guy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm. I, I like history a lot more than math and science. I yeah, wasn't a big fan of that. But history, history is my thing. I'm a big fan on like. Really, any type of history that, like, fallen civilizations, like the Romans, Egyptians, all that stuff. Um, Archaeology is pretty turnt. What else? I like World Wars and, like, Civil War, all that stuff when I was young. kind of, I feel like most guys do, or most boys do. So you, you would be comfortable just getting up there and walking around the National Mall in D.C. and seeing all the different yeah, memorials we did. and stuff? Yeah, my family did it when we were younger. That was, man, talking about a stressful experience. May's family going around to see the whole monuments with Big Kev. Oh, God. We had a whole schedule and everything, dude. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm glad Camp wasn't there. Camp wouldn't have made it. Real deal. He would have made it when we were young, man. Camp soft. <laughs> Camp's, had a, Camp's had a blessed childhood, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He really is. Like, I mean, like, from oh, a standpoint yeah, of, like, well, he's spoiled. I mean, from dude, a standpoint of, like. Dude, Camp. You guys you guys are spoiled because you, you only get, yeah. you, you get to be the big brother. So, you don't, you know, it's not like your normal big brother where you, like, Cade picked on you. Y'all are so much older. You can't. It'd be, like, yeah. not fair to pick on him, right? right? Although, well, we, well, he could we probably did, pick back at his size. We we did we did raise him up pretty tough. He, he's he's a tough old kid. Um, but, yeah, in the, in the sense of, like, being spoiled and stuff, yeah. He's definitely a spoiled. My parents are getting old, man. You know, they can't they can't lay the law down like they used to. Man, I don't believe that. Like no, I, okay, they can. Probably probably Big Kev doesn't. Big Kev's not as I think Kev, Big Kev might be getting soft. It's not you, it's, he's not as juicy as he used to be. Your you know mom isn't getting soft. No, 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 Melinda will never be soft. She's gonna breathe she's, fire forever. Oh dude, she's she's as strong as can be. She's 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 a workhorse, man. She's she's about as good as it gets. They don't make them like that nowadays. When that's I, dude, I don't know how I'm gonna find a girl. 
because because they don't make women like her nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I don't know. Everybody's worried about their sororities I, and <laughs> the Lululemon and stuff. Lulu, My mom was worried Lulu about Lulu getting Le a Mans. job. You know what I'm saying? Getting that education paid for. You know, it's funny, and I've told a few people know this story. Like the first time I ever oh, yeah, met M Melinda Mays, I didn't know her name. I started working out with, at D1 with Dunstan Kendrick, and it was me and a bunch of house moms that were working out at like 6 a.m. and yeah. I I worked about I worked out about three times and I was like destroyed yeah. <laughs> and I mean like these women just kicked my butt I was way out of shape I'm still way out of shape and but I, I mean I remember so like you know we're going through the you know Kate starts getting recruited and he posts the family picture up there and I'm like Oh my God, that's your mom. I used to work out with her, and she kicked my butt. And oh, like, dude. she loves to laugh about oh, that. Dude, she's so competitive. She's she's probably the most, no doubt, most competitive in our family. I mean, it's just stupid, like the way she sees, like the lens of life she sees. Like she she definitely saw you and made it a point probably to beat you every single day, and you just didn't even know it. Yeah, but really, everybody in there. She was probably. I mean, I don't know if she was probably first, but she probably wasn't far behind anybody. I promise you that. Oh, I, my my favorite my favorite times now with your parents are like, I come down from the press box with five minutes to go, and you know I always stop and say hello to them. Well, this past game, let's pass home game. Yeah. Um, for Texas A and M, I you know I need to go ahead and get in there and get my stuff set up. So I was going to walk straight in and then come back out and talk to her. That's normally what I do, mm -hmm. and. Like uh, Horace McCoy and his wife yelled at me because Brew had just had the surgery and stuff, and so I stopped. And then I went on in and I came back out. And your mom's like, "I got a bone to pick with you. You didn't stop to speak to me." I was like, "I was going to set up. I was coming back." Like you know, but the time before that was when camp. You know, I went to see. I was go see camp, and so land the land, land down the uh, um, the the groundwork for his commitment video right, in right. two thousand thirty two. <laughs> um, but so he. Uh, afterwards they're like it was so funny after you left he goes that's the one guy i wanted to see today because like he hadn't been to the games because you hadn't been playing right was, I, I guess it was the south carolina game when that game happened yeah i think so it was your first game back because he had not been to the games all year because you weren't no. playing so uh great family um very opinionated family all of them i'll do work i mean we're gonna say what we think. Oh, I'm you know with you. Hey, hey, listen, I, mean, I, 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 I could be an honorary mace for that because I'm as blunt as they come. Oh, dude, I mean, this there ain't no time in the life in life to to not say what you think. You know what I'm saying? I mean, screw that. That's that's no. Be you every day of the week. Be be you consistently. You know what I'm saying? That's how that's that's how I see it. Well, that's how that's how Big Mel sees it too. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, what's the best lesson she gave you besides that? Oh man, that's that's a good question. Man, I don't know. My mom's just been such. I don't. I don't know. Like one lesson. Just my mom's been just. She's just been great. You know, I'm just a great example of of how a person should act to, towards people and to everybody. I mean, treats everybody the same way and just goes through goes through hard stuff in life with such grace and elegance. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't know about one lesson, but just just no matter what's going on in your life, you you can't treat people any type of way differently. You know what I'm saying? Just she she always preaches be the same person every day, and and I kind of adopted that. And you know, she she is she's the same person every day. All right, here's something we'll talk about. When Cade went to Georgia, and you know naturally you're going to get a lot of venom out there you know when when the hometown kid the five star hometown kid goes somewhere else right? right what are you thinking because all of a sudden like you know you're you you know I, you're about to go through the recruiting process and you know in in full swing and like kind of what what's kind of your thought process there cuz i know like 7 8 9 10 year old cooper had dreams of playing here right all of a sudden big bro's not here like he would like he had intended to be because coaching changes and such what's going through your mind yeah um because you have to look at it from a family perspective but also individually you're like wait a minute yeah uh it 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 kind of tore me a different way because i always wanted to play with my brother you know that came before that came before anything sure you know, if, if Kay yeah. went and played at ucla i would have been like yeah let's go bruins or whatever they are you know what i'm saying <laughs> so 
Yeah, so that was, I mean, that that, that flipped stuff up for me. So I, I was kind of like gung-ho on let's go Georgia because Georgia was my second offer after Tennessee. So I got offered like the second week of my freshman year by Tennessee, and then right after the season I got offered by Georgia, Coach Pittman. And I didn't really even talk to him much after that until Cade went to Georgia and he started coming back to recruit Cade. But um, kind of just I really did like Georgia. I, I was definitely going to go there, but um, kind of how my recruiting played out. They they recruited me pretty hard for about another year or two. You know, I talked to them all the time and, and was kind of dead set on going there. And then right after my junior year probably of high school, I was, like I said, I was 240. So I was, I was you know, it wasn't looking great, basically. Yeah. yeah, for like a college recruiter that didn't really know me. So, um they kind of pulled back on me and, and, and Georgia didn't really recruit me for a couple months. And during the couple months that they didn't recruit me, Pruitt and them at Tennessee, they, like I said, they were telling me I could play whatever. It didn't matter if I was 240 or 290, they wanted Coover Mays on their football team. You know what I'm saying? So I, that said something for me, like, just, I don't know. I'm kind of built that way. I, I'm kind of, I mean, if you, if you, if you kind of turn on me once, I don't really, that's not my, it's not my gig, you know. I'll forgive you, but I don't really, I don't really mess with you after that. So, I was kind of turned back to Tennessee. So, that. so the the night before Cade goes in to tell Kirby he's coming back home, you know he's coming back home. What's your thought process like? Because I'm sure you're probably like, all right. Yeah, I mean, I knew it was about to, I knew it was about to go down. I didn't really know what was going to go down. You know, I didn't know how it was going to be received and everything. I kind of knew that probably Tennessee fans would would jump back on the train and I knew the son would probably be like, you know, I don't want any of the Maze brothers here. <laughs> like people, I mean, people, people hated me for it, which like, I mean, whatever, but you know, I mean, I think it's pretty harsh, but you know, some, some people, some people hop back on the, the Maze train and some people didn't, but I think it's turned out well. I mean, I truly, I, as much as people want to be upset, I think, I think we've done pretty well for this university. Oh, a thousand percent, a thousand percent. I mean, that's, you know, and I, again, like the place has had so much down the last 15 years, you know, um, you, you, you know, Kate saw it a fraction right there when he came back and you saw right. it in full bloom, you know, right. last year. Um, so you've kind of got to, you've kind of got to cash in some things. First, uh, member of the Mace family to beat Alabama. Boom. Yeah, no, I mean, there's there's definitely been some really good stuff that I of the immediate Mace family. Michael beat Alabama, I believe. But did he really? I'm pretty sure. What year did he graduate? Oh man, it was mid two thousands, maybe two thousand four to two thousand seven or something. Two thousand three. Yeah, because he yeah because he would have been yeah because oh six they won that game they won it in oh four they won it in oh three. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I mean, he was a part of a team that won against Alabama, but the immediate Mays family. Yeah, that's me. I mean, big Kev and Kay. Kay didn't, didn't even beat him in Georgia. No. So, yeah, you know, I'm the first one to go to Africa. I mean, I'm, huh, I'm a trendsetter. You know what I'm saying? Trendsetter in the Mays family. Trendsetter in the Mays family. Camp's gonna beat me out. He'll, he'll do some crazy stuff. You, you talk about like your love of history and fall of civilizations and stuff. Where's the one place in the world you'd like to go that you've not been? I'd like to go to Greece, not because of not because of my like loving of history, but just because Greece is so beautiful, man. Santorini, you ever peeped it? I have not. Oh man, go look up some pictures. I don't know if the I don't know if my eyes will do it justice, but the uh, the pictures do. Yeah, when you went with all leaders to to Rwanda. Yeah, we and went, then you had the picture about that gorilla, that big silver bag. Yeah. I remember you're like you're like scared to death. You're like. Oh, dude, you're like from scared. here to you bro. oh dude i was chilling gorillas love me the yeah. thing is though gorillas people don't know this gorillas aren't naturally like they don't just try to Aggressive. snatch you up you know yeah. what i'm saying you so like our guides would like make calls to them and like they would like reciprocate the call back and then you'd know that you could come near them but if they but they tell you before they never attack you without telling you they like give you a warning sign and then they 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 do what they're gonna do now thankfully we didn't hear that so we were good, but um, that was life changing. Talk about the great that that was better than any football experience, anything. Just overall life experience, best experience of my life going to Africa. 
when you look at your kind of where you want to go from here, you technically could come back next year. You have another year of eligibility if you wanted yeah. a COVID year. You may not. Um, you kind of soaking up these last few games here just because you don't know of your decision at this point? I mean, like, are you kind of approaching things like, I mean, Jacob approached it last year, went through senior day, you know, and then is going to go through senior day again uh, this year. I mean, like, how will you approach things the next few weeks? Man, I mean, this is going to, like, really come out as, like, coach speak, and you probably won't think I'm being honest, but, like, really, like, truly we've got st so much stuff to work on. Like, we're just scratching, like, even close to the surface of our potential as a team, and – I'm really trying to like spearhead us getting better and finishing out the year right. So I haven't even really thought about it that much. And plus, it it seems like I haven't like I don't know. Usually, probably if I would have played the whole year, like if I would have played like the first few games, like the first sure. what was it like five games? If I would have played like if I would been like eight games deep right now, I'd probably be like, oh, this is the end of the season. I probably need to like. But, no, I haven't really thought about it. I've only played, like, four games. So, it feels like I'm just getting started. Well, you have to think about it because, ultimately, it is coming up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've started thinking about it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, you got to be a – you were a captain at Kentucky. So, I mean, like, yeah. you know. I've been a captain twice Yeah, now. a few times. Pretty though, cool, yeah. man. Do you not like – do you like being a captain on the road versus home? Because then you miss going up through the tee at home. No, I like I like being a captain anytime I can. I think that's – dude, that's, that's like the old sign honor. of – yeah. Of, of people trusting you and everything. I don't know. I, I, I love that stuff. Just because, I don't know, I kind of called it. You know what I'm saying? Or I didn't, but but my fa me and my family knew what, what was going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like er like you said, like everybody kind of, just kind of the way I grew up, like everybody counted me out. Like even my best friends, like a lot of my friends, like said I would never be able to play at Tennessee. Like I would be too small. Like well, They saw I, that picture I took of you when you were Dude, like, that too. Yeah, I mean like my – High school coaches didn't think I was going to be able to play here. I mean, just – but I always knew. Like, I knew. And, like, we, me and my family have talked about it. My mom, like, like I knew I knew all this was going to happen. But it's just playing out right now. When you guys start going tempo, is that when you're having your most fun? Because, I mean, I think you, you control the pace no. as well as anybody. No? Man, no, dude, it's not fun. You know how tired you are out there? I mean, like, think about, think about it. Oh, no, dude, I get it. But, I mean, you, you – you make the offense go at a pace that, you know, is really, really do, quick. Yeah, I do take pride in it. I, I, I take pride in doing my job at a high level. You know what I'm saying? So anytime I can, you know, do my part at a high level and make a difference, I don't know. I take I, I, I love that part of it. I, I really like being a center. Much better than high school when you weren't a center? No, it's just, dude, like, I don't know. There's something, there's something about running the show. You know what I'm saying? Being like that guy. I don't know. And like, on the ball. You control it. Dude, just built for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just built for it. Are you a talker? No. Heck no. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're so tired out there. I don't think I've talked. The last time I talked was last, probably my freshman year. The most I've ever When you were a tight end. No, no, no. I started, like, three games at center. Yeah, no, no. I know. But, I mean. Those, but, was, but it was when I was starting at center. Yeah. At, at, at tight end, no. But it was only when, like. People like Trey and Cade and Jerome were beside me. You know what I'm saying? It's felt, easy to talk when you had oh, some yeah. bullies beside oh, of dude, you. Oh, dude, I felt hard. You know what I'm saying? And they, and I knew they were going to protect me. Like, I was a little bro. Like, Jerome and Trey, like, would have fought a circling saw for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, so would Cade. <laughs> like, I'm serious. Like, I, it was it was a great experience. But nowadays, dude, I'm so tired out there. Like, you just don't – I don't know. I block everything out. I don't have I don't have time for that. I've got bigger fish to fry, you know? Like, doing the tempo and all that stuff, you're just so tired. There's no time to talk. Oh, I remember that first game back against South Carolina. You came out of the half, and halfway through the first drive of the second half, I look down there, and you're like, <gasps> dude, no, my belly was like, hurting, man. And I'm like, look at this. Look at Darth Vader down there. Yeah, Darth Vader. <laughs> man, I ain't never been called that before. <laughs> I am. I guess I am. I felt like him. I don't know what, what he was feeling like, but probably something comparable is what I was feeling. It hurt, man. How much different is it a month later? A lot better as far as – Yeah, I'm finally getting back to the point where I feel like back kind of to myself, you know. It's been it's been a process getting back here. But this this past game, I'm going to keep getting better. Like, I think my I've played my worst ball this year starting out, and I think I've gotten better each game. I think Kentucky was probably my best game this year. So feeling more like myself and, and – you know, super happy about it, but it's it's a journey for sure. Well, the journey will continue. UConn coming up Saturday, and then of course road game next week at 
at Missouri before they return home for Georgia and Vanderbilt. Could be the last few games of this guy's career. We'll see. Only time will tell. We appreciate you coming in. Appreciate you, man. That was really smooth. Like you took the journey. You know, like, it's it's, it's called cool. professional. Yeah, something like that. You better not. <laughs> appreciate you, Cooper. Yeah.